Now let's look at the second example problem for binary search. So this is a lead code problem, find peak element. Here's a problem description. A peak element is an element that's greater than its neighbors. So if an element is in the middle, then it has to be uh, bigger than both the element on the left and the element on the right. Uh, if it's uh, uh, at the uh, one end, it only needs to be uh, greater than its uh, uh, one and only neighbor. So you are given a array uh, nums, um, and the condition is that uh, no two adjacent elements are the same. Uh, so this makes the problem a little bit easier. Um, well, I guess uh, without this condition, the peak element may not exist. So if all the array contain the same element, then uh, there isn't a peak element. So uh, given this, uh, you are asked to find a peak element and return its index. And the array may contain multiple peaks. Uh, returning anyone is OK. So let's look at the first example. So in this array, uh, the only peak element is 3. So it's uh, greater than 2 and greater than 1. Uh, so we should output 2. Uh, look at the second example. So this array has two peak elements. So 6 obviously is one peak element. It is the uh, uh, largest element in the array. Um, so it's greater than 5 and 4. Uh, 3 is also a peak element because it has a uh, just one neighbor the number 2 is the right and it's a 2 so because it's greater than that one so it is also a peak element so you can output either 0 or 5 um, so uh, at this point maybe you should uh, pause the video and uh, think about how you would solve this uh, problem all right so obviously we can do a linear scan. So we can just check every element and then look at its uh, uh, neighbor or neighbors and see whether it's greater than them. If it is, uh, then uh, that is uh, a peak element. Or we can simply use linear scan to find the maximum element which is guaranteed to be the peak element. So this will have the complexity uh, uh, big O n, so this is a linear time. So we want to do better than that. Uh, we want to uh, solve the problem in log time. Um, so how do we do that? How do we uh, speed it up? So it may not be obvious that this is a binary search uh, problem. But let's uh, take uh, the, the element in the middle and see what we can uh, find. So we look at that element, we check both its neighbors. If it's greater than both neighbors, then it is a peak. If that's not the case, then at least uh, one side, one of the neighbor must be bigger. So without loss of generality, let's say the, the this middle element is less than its right neighbor. So what do we know about uh, peaks in that situation? So let's look at this example. So, so we look at the middle element, it's 3. So the element to its right is bigger, it's 5. So um, if 3 is not the peak, then the question is, uh, could 5 be the peak? Well, it turns out 5 is not the peak. Um, and if uh, 5 is not peak, then, then the, the 6 is the peak. So the claim is that uh, if the middle element is less than the right element, then on the right half of the array, there must exist at least one peak element. So there may still be peak element to the left, but on the right side, there must exist one peak element. And I encourage you to try to come up with the proof for that. The, it's uh, fairly straightforward, but yeah. OK, so here's the proof. So uh, uh, if this uh, middle element is less than the element to the right, so either the element on the right is a peak, or um, if it's not a peak, it's already greater than the element to the left, so it must be less than the element to the right. So then we look at that. So either that one is a peak, or it's less than the element to its right. So either go in this uh, sequence, either one of the element is a peak, or we will reach to the end, and then the last element will be a peak. So that is only the proof that the peak must exist on the right half. It's not the algorithm that we will use to find the peak on the right half, because that will also be linear time. So we are not actually scanning this. But knowing that the peak must exist 
on the right half of the array, we can repeat this uh, recursively repeat this process. We look at the middle element, and then uh, either that is the pick, or we know a pick exists to its left, or a pick exists to its right. So every time we will roughly half the the the, the region that we are looking at. So in the overall, we'll get uh, a logarithmic uh, complexity. So this can be solved by uh, sort of similar uh, it's similar structure as a binary search. So to recap on binary search, uh, you should understand the binary search API of your favorite language. So whatever language you use, you need to understand what the binary search does. For example, Java's binary search will return any element uh, that equals the, it, but there's no guarantee which one it is. Um, and also, uh, you should know how to write binary search when you need to do so, because a lot of time you are binary, you use binary search not for finding an element in an array, actually for uh, a number of other things. So, for example, both of the examples we look at, you um, if you're using Java, you can't use uh, uh, bi the binary search in the library. You have to write your own. And uh, especially when you just start uh, writing this kind of code, I strongly encourage you write down the invariance at the comment. So in fact, uh, writing down critical uh, uh, precise information in the comment is very helpful, it's not just for other people to read. Actually, when you write your other code, uh, you can immediately see what invariant you must maintain, and you can easily check whether your code does that. So having something in your mind is not as good as uh, something in, your, in front of your eyes, so that you can immediately see and process. And also, sometimes uh, it's not obvious. Binary search is a solution. Um, so especially if you're doing competitive programming, uh, you will find that binary search can be used to solve a wide range of problems that in the in the beginning, uh, it's not clear that the binary search is the right solution. So in some sense, um, binary search should always be something in the back of your mind. If a problem that's not quite solvable using other things, you will want to see whether binary search can be used to solve it. Uh, in particular, there's a class of optimization problem where it's very difficult to find the optimal solution. But uh, given a solution, you can check uh, whether that solution's cost satisfy. Uh, what is the cost of that solution? So in that case, you can use binary search to find the optimal solution because you can find you can check uh, whether uh, a particular uh, sort of uh, well, uh, it should be. Uh, for a particular optimization objective, if you want to say you have to solve this problem with a cost uh, below some threshold, then you can check whether uh, that's uh, feasible or not. Even though coming up with the optimal solution is hard. So then you can use binary search to find what is um, uh, sort of the best achievable objective. Um, and that's uh, sometimes known as the bisection. And uh, this is a very powerful technique that we will cover in CP2. Okay.